today I have Armani Chaudhry. He's an, an artistic storyteller. He teaches you about public speaking, social dynamics, and leveling up your mentality. Armani, welcome. How are you, my friend? I'm doing well, bro. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you here. It's great, even better, seeing you in virtual face-to-face -face because we've made business before. We've talked before through Skype. We've talked through through WhatsApp, but we've never met face-to-face. -face. It's always like cool when you actually meet the people you interact with on Twitter in either real life, Skype. I try to make sure I get a Skype call going all the time. It's amazing, Especially man. People. Yeah. And, and oh, I'm, I, I usually give people thanks at the end, but I'm going to give you thanks right now, man, because I really appreciate you taking time time off to, to record this video for me and for the listeners. For sure, man. And you're going to be hopping on my podcast, too. Of course, you'll be my first time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have you as a guest this time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And as I as I introduce you, you work with people on teaching them how to speak in, in public, how to level up their life, their mentality, their social dynamic skills, and all of that through storytelling. So I want to talk about that. Armani, how can someone craft a story that makes their heart bleed? That's a really good, a good question. I like that. Well, traditionally, whenever I'm working with my clients, whenever I'm crafting one of my personal stories for my newsletters, there's a few different elements that, you know, I personally think every story should have. We're, let's just like, you know, break it down from the beginning. Yes. So typically in the beginning, one thing that you have to understand is that less is more. Okay. Beginner storytellers, even like myself, when I first started, you try to do a lot at once. You know, you really want to pack that story in with all these different themes. But I would recommend that like the first thing that you do is typically have one theme. And the theme is the hierarchy of your story. Okay. The way that we try to like, you know, really build stories is that um, you want to start off with the hierarchy first. And then you want to build down from that. Okay. So the What first do you mean by hierarchy? Hierarchy is basically how you want to structure your story. It's sort of like the backbone. Because if you're just winging it from the get-go, you may have a lot of excessive details that doesn't matter. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So the hierarchy is the, the theme, is the general point of your story. Excellent. And you, you want to be able to say that theme in one sentence. What is your story about? Okay? Well, is that a question for me? Because I, we could we could do it like 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 you're like uh, giving consulting me and people like could learn from from, from yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. so let me give you a free session. So Yeah. Jose, hey, great. I like the idea. Yeah, so how about this? We'll make you the protagonist, okay? Mm -hmm. You're the protagonist of the story. What is the story that you want to tell your audience? Well, just in one sentence, give me. Uh, maybe you can start your online business even if you live in the middle of nowhere. Okay, that, that's actually a really good one. And that kind of ties in with my next point, which is relatability. Okay, you want to make sure that your protagonist, which in this case is you, mm -hmm. is relatable. Okay, Continue. and one of, yeah, one of the best ways to build relatability is to enhance your flaws people don't want to connect with like the protagonist who has the perfect life like he already is making millions and millions in his online business didn't struggle stuff like that that's not a fun story so we want to first you know really identify your flaws as a character what are some of the struggles that you went through okay and that's what we called um adding depth to a character great makes sense and total sense yeah yeah so traditionally i work with people that you know have multiple characters in their story you can even have one like you could be the predominant character and the only character then from there the next thing that really makes a good story is the conflict okay so 
what would you say are some conflicts in the business world? Well, this is hard. This is too, too overwhelming. There's too much information, too many courses, too many people talking about different ways to make money online. And uh, this person says this, this person says that. It comes into conflict because I admire both, but they have contrary opinions. So this is what I used to experience. And I know many of, of, our, of our listeners may be also experience, experiencing some of these ideas, you know, because when you're starting out, you usually don't try to keep it simple, as you said at the start of your, of your talk. Right. You know, so that's more or less the conflicts I used to have. Exactly. So, I mean, your story already has a bunch of conflicts. I mean, you just named at least like three to four. But basically, before we introduce those conflicts, we want to build up to it. Okay. So now, since we have the we have the main core of the story designed, we have the theme, mm -hmm. we have the character, and we have the conflicts. Now, we're pretty much ready to start. So the way that I traditionally like telling a story, and this is the complete beginner's one, I call it the hero's journey. You can call it something else. But it's basically where you introduce the character. You give a little backstory about the character. And everything is going right in the character's world. Okay, everything seems fine. Hypothetically, say you're working a nine-to-five job right now. You're really liking it. You're like, yo, I love my nine-to-five job. And you're just spending some days doing your nine to five until one day you're like something's wrong something's missing i don't really like what i'm doing i really feel like i can be challenged i really feel like i can do more with my life so now you've introduced your first piece of conflict doubt and doubt is something that everyone faces like every human feels it at times they wonder if they're pushing themselves enough. So automatically, a lot of your readers, your listeners, your viewers, they're going to be able to relate with you. They're going to be able to empathize with you. And once they can empathize with you, the engagement levels are rising. Because now they're like, okay, Jose's story is relating a lot to mine. I got to see what he does. And now you've also interrupted the pattern which is huge in storytelling. You want to make your story very unpredictable. And that's another thing that really keeps the, the viewers into it. And from there, we're just going to keep building it up. And we're going to say, you know, Jose did a lot of brainstorming. He really thought about it deep. And he realized he wanted to get into online business. Okay? So now the audience members, they're thinking, okay, so everything's going to go good now, right? Everything seems perfect. Everything seems settled. Not quite. Now, that's when we're going to start introducing all those conflicts that you listed earlier, okay? So we're basically taking the audience on this ride. That's what makes a real good story. You want to engage the emotions because people aren't really reading a story with their logical hat. They're, list they're reading it with their emotional hat. So the main goal is for you to take them on a ride. An emotional ride is even better. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm right now, you, you see me with this big smile yeah. because I can really, you know, when something makes you smile as I'm smiling right now and when your body responds in a, you know, funny way to something someone is telling you, it's because that thing is, it's, it's, you know, making you think, making you think how to use it. I'm just here right now. How can I use this? How can I use this? I, I suspect that many people will find value with what you tell, with, just, with what you just told us, that less is more when you're starting out. Build a theme around your life. Create a relatable character with yourself. Right. Insert conflict to, to, you know, because people really, that's how you build a relatability with conflict because, oh, conflict. you went through that also? Mm -hmm. I too. Right. How, how did you fix that problem? Oh, uh -huh. like that? Let me try it. Oh, it worked. 
oh, Jose is our genius. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's how it works. And, and, and the great thing is that you, you just laid a simple framework for storytelling. That's it. And the, if you want to keep your story going, I want to give you the final product, which is called the story tension. Okay? That's when you introduce the conflict, but you delay the resolution. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So now yes. your readers have to keep on reading because they've invested in your character. Yes. They've invested in your conflict. They've invested in your theme. What's next? How does this story end? And that's what creates a very, very compelling story. Some people, like, they'll introduce the conflict and they'll give the resolution in the next sentence. Like, well, I, you know, had all of these business problems and this is how I resolved it. <laughs> and I'm like, come on, that's it? Build the conflict, build the tension, make right. people uh, curious. You know, I was talking with a friend, he's a copywriter, and he really knows, really knows how to capture your attention making you feel curiosity, curious about what he's going to sell you because he's always selling in, in his emails. And I asked him, um, what's your trick, man? How do you sell so much? Curiosity, man. Curiosity. Make people feel curious about what you're selling and you will own the world. Perfect. You know? Yeah. And, and that's well, part and of branding. On, right. And just to add on to that, Jose, um, storytelling also is about having the right mentality. If I always tell people, you are not telling a story, you're taking them on a journey. And when you start making this like little mentality shift, what happens is you go from putting on your logical hat where you're telling a story, you're just explaining a lot of facts, to you taking them on a journey where now instead you're using more visuals. Because a storyteller, the main job is to paint images with words, okay? That's your main job. And when you have that little mentality shift where you're taking them on a journey, now writing a story becomes a lot easier. You don't fall for the trap of giving too much details because at the end of the day, the details that we find like really important, other people find redundant. So you, you just want to like make sure you're just adding images, make sure you're getting the imagination involved and awesome. the emotions involved. You know, I'm a really fact-oriented person. I've always struggled with finding the power words to make people feel stuff. With time, I've, I've been getting a, a little bit better because you know what? Uh, with Twitter, you get in, instant feedback and you, you know what people like, like and retweet after a while. But still, for example, in my case, in my case, I've always struggled to create what you just told me to create a mental image in people. So how do you actually make people visualize? I know through words, but how can I learn to use those words? How can I use a, a really powerful descriptive language in order to, to create a brand with, with my own personality, with, with my own physicality, with my own, you know, my, with my own life? Right. And that's a good question because that's how I pretty much build the Armani Talks brand. Um, all the tweets, all the experiences, these are stuff that I've been through, that I've seen with my first, like in a firsthand perspective. And just to answer your question, the best way that I would recommend to do it is by closing your eyes and you have the power to visualize. You have the power to have your imagination and you want to first see exactly what you're going to write. Okay. I call this chain images or movie images. Mm -hmm. This I did a thread about this a long time ago. I'll retweet it right after this interview. <laughs> but basically, uh, you want to get your movies from your head onto writing. And that's something that happens more and more as you either write or as you, you know, podcast, as you do YouTube videos, whatever the case is. So how I discover my images is just through doing it more. And the more you're doing it, the more you're discovering your voice. So okay. it's about it's about paying attention to your thoughts. Exactly. That's why I personally say treat your Twitter like a journal. Don't you know? Don't try to do it in a way where you're like, oh, okay, this is going to get a lot of high engagement. Don't do it like that at all. 
the best advice I try to give people, and this is how I build the Armani Talks brand, is I give advice to my younger self, okay? And I also get my future, I try to use my imagination, uh, put my mindset in my future self, and give advice to my present day self. And when you start doing that, you start journaling in a way more advanced way. And this advanced way of journaling actually rewires your mentality as well. Oh, and believe nice. it or not, this is when you're being your most authentic. And when you're being that authentic, you'll start discovering your own power words yourself. You see, this is something I, I, I used to struggle with. Uh -huh. And I know people that still struggle with, with what, what I'm going to tell you. And okay. it's the following. So the other day I was speaking with this uh, chick about, uh, you know, Twitter. And I told her, I asked her, um, tell me, what did you do? Oh, well, I'm 20 years old. I'm a judo champion. <laughs> She's a judo champion. I do this. I do that. I'm the military. I just don't know what to talk about. I'm uh -huh. like, are you? <laughs> wait, so you're a chick <laughs> that can kick ass. Right. That can break your arm all over the place. You can really, <laughs> you're in the military, you are a champion, and you still don't feel that you're special or that you have something interesting to tell people. Mm -hmm. And that got me thinking, really, pe people really believe that their life sucks. People really believe that their life is boring. Uh -huh. So how does one break free from thinking that? Or let's say, if your life is really boring, how can you make it a little bit more attractive through words? Well, that's a good question. And one of my biggest tips is you're not writing with your brain, you're writing with your heart. Uh, the cheat code to get like creative content, like forever, get unlimited content, is you lead with your emotions and you edit with logic. What happens with most people is they do it the reverse way. They like lead with uh, logic and they're trying to sprinkle in the emotion. And when you start doing something like that, your mind starts locking up. I know a lot of people as well, like they're amazing people. I mean, they've traveled all around the world. They have multi-million dollar businesses and they're like, yo, what do I talk about? <laughs> I'm like, you don't know what to talk about. I mean, there's so much stuff. And so I'm sitting with them. I'm like, okay, how about this? Write something for me, write Like just a tweet for me. And they're at this point, like, and they're really thinking, you know? They're thinking a lot. And at that point, I'm like, wait, wait, wait. You're thinking too much. I want you to write the first thing that comes to your mind. And at that point, they're like, oh, okay. Like, just choose an idea and write whatever you can about that immediately. So that's when they're like, okay. And just like that, they write something in 30 seconds or so. And, like, the grammar's not right. There's certain words that are missing. But overall, your idea is out there. You're not stalling out from the get-go. You felt something and you wrote it. And at that point, now you can clean up the grammar. Now you can clean up the sentence structure and all that. So the people that you know are having trouble writing, I just tell them, you got to stop thinking so much. You see <laughs> what I'm saying? Because they're trying to drive the car with, their, <laughs> with the foot on the brake. I'm like, no, no, no. Remove the brake and click on the accelerator completely. And when you do that, you know, you, you, you start writing a lot more cooler stuff. That's great, man. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, because you just laid out the cure to procrastination. Because yeah. procrastination usually comes when you feel overwhelmed about the task you're going to do. Hey, just start. Just start. Lay down, write down everything that comes to your mind. Forget about grammar. Forget about any coherence it could make and just write down and then edit. When you edit is when you create the, the, the masterpiece. Editing exactly. is where the masterpieces are created. Exactly. And, you know, something about masterpieces that reminds me of, of creating your own brand. Because your brand, it's your masterpiece. It's the biggest thing you can, you can create, your own brand, your personal brand. It's your life masterpiece. 
So we've talked already about storytelling, about how creating a relatable person, how to use conflict to, to make people feel as if they can be like you. Now I want to know specifically, specifically how can I use all those you know, uh, storytelling techniques in order to create my own brand, a brand that people feel they want to buy stuff from me, a brand that people really look forward to, be, to, to, to engage every day. How can I use that for my own personal, well, let's say all personal gain and create my own brand? Well, you actually do a really good job with this, Jose. I, I noticed that. Um, Thank you. So the best thing about creating a personal brand is you want to lead with your personality first and you want to sprinkle in your skill sets within that. A lot of people I see do the exact opposite. They keep talking about their skill sets all the time, like nonstop. And every now and then they're like, hey, this is me. Like, this is my personality as well. But if you really want to build a meaningful relationship with your audience, they have to trust you as the person. They have to trust Jose Rosado as the person. So what I personally do is I don't always talk about public speaking. I don't always talk about emotional intelligence, creativity. Uh, you know, I talk about my life. And what happens when I talk about my life is a lot of other people around the world, they're able to get the same insights as well. They're like, wait a minute, Armani and I are pretty similar. Wait a minute, let me see what else he has to say. Oh, whoa, he also knows public speaking too. Now they're learning about my skill sets after they've been sold on my personality. So I've never like really used the Armani Talks brand to be like really, really serious. I've used it as a platform to say whatever. And then you also add in the skill sets that you know. So for someone that's like trying to build their personal brand for the first time, what I recommend is you don't lead with your skill set so much. Let them know who you are as a person and also sprinkle in your skill sets. So I would recommend at first you do a, like a 75, 25, and then you start playing around with the numbers to see what works more. But a lot of my clients, I mean, they, they really, like, for example, I'll give you public speaking as an example. Yes. They, they liked the fact that I would talk about my speech anxiety. They, would, they liked the fact that I would talk about how I choked my first speech. I didn't say a single word. It was bad. Oh, man. But, once they understood like whoa this guy is relatable this guy is going through the same thing that i went through now they're much more receptive to the public speaking knowledge i've learned from toastmasters being vice president you know having leadership roles so i sold awesome. them on armani the person first and then i sold them on the toastmasters vp second wow makes sense well, no, total sense total sense it's, it's about describing your life in order to attract atta attract people to pay attention and then hey i do this bye <laughs> exactly exactly i mean you're uh, i mean we've talked a few times on the phone you're you're like a really humble relatable person as well and then you know right before i was telling you wow jose you have a lot of skill sets but at this point, I know Jose the person. I really respect Jose the person. So, you know, I definitely want to do business with you. But if you just came to me and you're like, hey, I'll design your website, and I don't know who you are, I'm like, eh. You know, that that's great because some people, they do that. They just out of the blue, <laughs> hey, man, I, I have this for you. Pay me. Dude, don't uh, do that. Don't do that. Okay. Okay, sometimes it's necessary if, if you are starting in like a really, a real, real business. But if you're start talking about personal brand, that's not, a, that's not the way to approach business. Right. First, you engage with a person online or through wherever, and then you build that trust slowly, slowly. And then, hey, Armani, I do this. If you ever need me, call me. Everything takes time to build. And talking about time to build, you know, there are some skills that really translate very, very well into the online world. You know, some skills that take time to develop. I would like to talk some of those skills. 
and skills, you know, and how much time you recommend people to, you know, practice it before engaging or trying it out on the public. Let's start with, for example, with storytelling. How much time you give people to, to learn it and then, you know, expose their skills to the, to the world? Well, it's different for different people. Mm -hmm. Certain people, they've been writing for a while. Say you're, you've been copywriting for a while. I'm pretty sure you'll pick up storytelling pretty quickly. A lot of these similar frameworks. Um, but if you're someone that's brand new to storytelling, I want basically you to produce a few pieces from beginning to end. I don't want you know you to like start then finish halfway then on to the next one. No, you want to finish from beginning to end, and then the next thing that you have to be able to do is read it out loud. Okay, this is the part that most people forget. And basically, when you're able to read it out loud and not cringe, that's when you're ready. That's when you're ready. It's one of the easiest ways to test it. Um, but yeah, I mean, for most people that I've seen, it takes around, it's very similar to public speaking. It takes around six speeches to really overcome most of your speech anxiety. And it takes six solid stories from beginning to end. And it could only be just like two pages, but you've started it from the beginning all the way to the end, around six stories for most people. So for example, which other skills uh, from the offline world really translate well to the online world besides storytelling and well copywriting also copywriting well if you're a good public speaker i think you have a good idea of what captivates an audience you know exactly you've dealt with a lot of audiences that were bored you've dealt with a lot of audiences that were you know pulling out their phones and stuff so you know what to talk about that really captivates an audience another soft skill that i talk about a lot is creativity and this is a tweet that I wrote a few weeks ago, but creativity allows you to turn your mind from a galaxy to a universe, okay? It unlocks like a mega mind. So the people that survive really well in terms of personal branding on the online world are always the ones that are very creative. They're doing something that no one else is doing. They're very innovative. They break the mold and they really force other people to think. Because if you think about it, believe it or not, a lot of humans are bored all the time. <laughs> They're just bored. So when they see someone that's very creative, they see someone that's always bringing new ideas out there and they're never running out, that's a very powerful way to stick out in the online world. So if awesome. you're someone that could level up your creativity skill, I would 100% say that you'll do well in personal branding. How does one build up? that creativity well i have a few like, practical exercises the first one is read some more fiction books and the reason i say that is because when you're reading fiction books it's forcing your brain to work out the creativity muscle and i highly recommend doing science fiction books because now your brain is turning regular words into images from out of this world okay so this is a really, really powerful way to stretch your mind. And after wow. you're done reading certain fiction books, you get out to the real world. And believe it or not, there's a creativity spillover. A lot of the most fluid storytellers, the best writers, they read a lot of creativity or I'm, they read a lot of fiction books. You see? So that's one. Another thing that I would recommend is write some fiction. Okay, write some fiction. And for this exercise, I recommend doing something completely out of the norm. Um, talk about an elephant who wants to go on a journey to turn into a cat. <laughs> and your logical mind is like, wait a minute, what? there's nothing logical about this. Exactly. That forces your creativity to step up. And when you're writing it, your brain is going to like really, really hurt. <laughs> because being forced to connect new neurons that's never been connected before. But trust me, it works. After you're done doing this exercise, you're going to start producing a lot of different ideas that you didn't before, which are logical hat. So those are two things that I recommend. Read some fiction and write some fiction. You know, that that's great because uh, I don't know what I read about creativity, 
but when I read it, it really, really made so much sense. And it talked more or less about what you said. So creativity is not born out of the nothing. Creativity is joining stuff that you've seen before in a, let's call it in a new way. Well, how to turn the, the elephant into, into a cat. Okay, that's new. Now, how can I turn it into, into, the, into a cat? That's where the creativity comes in. Joining those two knowledge, those two ideas into one, and then use storytelling in order to captivate the, the, the audience. Which is, dude, storytelling. I have I have this friend that calls it story selling. Story because, selling. Wow, that's that's a very nice way to yeah, put it. Yeah, because stories really sell. They sell an, an emotion. You can make people cry. You can make people cringe. You can make people laugh of joy from a simple story. You know, and, and the great thing about what you told me is that there is a formula to storytelling. There is a formula, a theme, make it relatable, uh, uh, enter the conflict, and for beginners, less is more. Keep it simple. Less. Keep right. it simple. Yep. You know? And, you know, the thing about online business is that people don't like to keep it really simple. And I... I'm one of those people that like simplicity. You know, you've been on on the line making business, mostly through through consulting. How did you start out? How did you, how did you start out your your online persona and your online consulting business and guide us through through that journey? Sure. So the first thing I did was I started a Twitter page, and at first I built my Twitter audience. And as I built my Twitter audience, I took it to the next step where I built a storytelling email newsletter. And this is a great way to connect with your extended fans because if they put in their email email link, that means they really, really like you. Yes. So, so I basically built two funnels. And from there, I mean, I built a website, which you're luckily helping me out with. Yes. And that's all you pretty much need from there you have a lot of potential clients in your twitter audience in your email list audience and hopefully a lot of people that find you through google as well and they start going over your content so i really recommend that you have a my story section so they can see what you're about if you're someone that has a weekly newsletter i recommend telling some stories there so people can see what you're about as well and from there, believe it or not, a lot of your work sells itself mm -hmm. because at that point, people are like, hey, I need some help with my storytelling as well. What can I do? You see? I and see it. That's how your consulting services can grow. Yeah. And for example, when you are starting out, let's say you are in zero followers. Yep. I suspect that you didn't start at 100% zero or did you? I started off exactly at zero. Okay. So, so I'll tell you the story about how it started. So basically, I remember before I started the Armani Talks page, I was I was never a big fan of Twitter. I was a huge fan of Instagram. I actually own a sports entertainment business for Instagram. So I was a big fan of that platform. But around 2000, late 2016, early 2017, I was going through like a really tough time. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to start a Twitter page and I'm just going to write. I'm going to write about whatever comes to my mind. I don't really care if anyone follows me or not. And at that point, I remember I was just tweeting. I was just writing. And for like weeks and weeks, I only had like nine followers or so. <laughs> you know, you know, that's good work, right? But, you know, as I was tweeting... Eventually, there was a pretty big name from our sphere, uh, Western Mastery. Yes. He saw my account and he noticed that I talk about public speaking a lot. And he actually gave me a shout out. And through his shout out, it kind of got the avalanche going, you know. Just overnight, I ended up gaining 200 followers. So I went from nine all the way to 200. And from there, I mean... I was able to build a little bit more influence because other people from our sphere 
also want to public speak to take their brand to the next level. So then they contacted my page, gave me some shout outs as well. And, you know, I produce a lot of content as well. Yes. And yeah, yeah. And that helps out tremendously. So I would say it was a bit from the shout outs. It was a bit from consistency and also a lot to do with quantity and quality. That's great. And using those storytelling techniques and and making people feel as if you can solve their problems, you know, telling them, I used to be like this. Now I am like that. Exactly. You can do the same. It's it's so it's such a easy and simple idea. And yet I know so many, many people that struggle with that. You know, you were talking about uh, later uh, um, before about about Twitter, about the topics that you talk about, that you talk about, of course, speaking, public speaking, social dynamics, mentality, um, mindset and storytelling. But sometimes you also talk about your life and you spice it up. You know, I have this friend. I was talking to him today through Twitter. He's been stuck in like 700 followers for like three months. Right. And even though when I, I'm I'm trying to help him with, with some retweets, but yet he, he not he, he's not growing. And not I growing. told him, dude, the thing is that you only you're only talking about one thing, one thing alone. When I read your timeline, it's the same thing <laughs> with different words. Ah mindset, 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 mindset. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. You have multiple ways in order to express the idea. The base of, of online business is relationships, mm -hmm. wealth, and health. If you can interwine whatever you want to talk about with those big three areas of life, you, you have a, a, a pot of gold in front of you. Whatever you, you talk about, try to uh, make it relatable and using it as a let's call it as a car as a, a transportation device into wealth health and relationship if you do that <laughs> dude there's no way no way in life people will not pay attention to you they will pay attention to you if you do it like that mm -hmm. and using the framework you just laid out it, it's in such a simple and understandable way i guess I guess people can really, really forward their life if, if they do truly practice what, what you're teaching us right now. Perfect. No, no. And for sure, if you combine a lot of the storytelling principles with the three elements that you just mentioned, it's game over. It's much better than just telling people what to think. Instead, you're telling it in story format mm -hmm. where it engages their emotions and imagination. It's a much more easier way to make them receptive. You know, there's something about your brand that really, really attracts me. I once, I once tweeted you, Armani is my spirit animal. I saw that. I, lo I love that. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Because the tweets, your tweets are just fantastic. You know, I remember when I was starting out, like reading, reading your tweets. Oh, I like that. Let me, let me swipe it. Okay, I want. I'm going to talk about that yet yeah, tomorrow. I remember that. I remember <laughs> that. Yeah, yeah. I guess some people do that with, with my with my Twitter. I guess. Well, Jose, so you, yeah, you grew up. You grew on Twitter really quickly too. Yeah, that that was it was pure luck, of course. No way. <laughs> no, it was it was not luck. That's um, crazy, man. Uh, consistency has a bias. Uh, success has a bias for con consistency. You know, so uh, when you're consistent and you just keep doing it, keep doing it, success. <laughs> Will, will, will come will come and if you sure. if you use the principles of storytelling it would make it would make it come even even faster which is great which is great for sure you know sure. here's the here's the thing here's the thing I, i was going to tell you about you know social dynamics people fear fear engaging online and we're talking about online business they they only They don't only fear it, but sometimes when they go into a social media, they just want to send everyone to hell, you know. And that's not how that's not how you build a powerful brand that people respect and want to buy stuff from you. So, 
how does one translate real life social dynamics into the online world? Well, it's all about the small things. I mean, I'm a big proponent of using people's names. Okay. I, I think if you use people's names, that's huge. A lot of relationships are always built in the DMs as well. So if you, yep, yep, that's how we connected. But that's a great way. I mean, that's a social dynamics principle. If you really want to get close with someone, you have to take them from a group setting and talk to them in a one on one setting. Same with social media. You're going from like the entire tweet feed mm -hmm. straight to the DMs where you can foster a more meaningful connection. Another thing that I recommend is you're not really, really cool with someone until you either hear their voice or you see their eyes, which is why I highly recommend the people that you do want to build a bond with, you get a Skype uh, convo going with them. Very, very simple. And other than that, I mean, it's all about consistency. The people that are very, very consistent in interacting with, like, say, their top favorite follows, yes. they stick out. The reason uh, I was able to get shout outs from a few people in my initial stages was because I was commenting. I was, you know, showing some love to them. I was giving retweets. And if you can be consistent rather than just, you know, hopping on the DMs and asking for a favor, that's you applying social dynamics from the real world straight on the online platform. And that's how Twitter was meant to be used as well. It wasn't just meant to be used for, you know, just consuming trash. It was really meant to be used for, you know, building meaningful relationships, connecting with people all over the world. I mean, you're from Dominican Republic. Yes. Yeah. And I'm from the U.S. and we're connected straight through Twitter. That's true. That's true. And it's such a simple thing. What, what you described using people, people's names, DMing them, uh, engaging with them, trying to figure out a way in order to Skype, which makes the difference, man. Right. Makes right. Total difference. And hearing people's voices for the first time when you've engaged like for months on Twitter, it's special. It's special, you know, and, it and it's, it's very, very memorable and, and it creates a weird bond, you know, like you don't usually talk for an hour with people, you know, but when you Skype with, with your friends from Twitter or from social media, you can really do that. You're Skype, right. And it creates a special bond. It does. It's actually funny because I was talking to one of my friends recently and he was like, Yo, Armand, I'm not going to lie. A lot of my friends on Twitter are, I'm like closer with now than my friends in real life. Because the thing with Twitter is you find a lot of people that are like-minded. Like, I don't know about you, Jose, but do you have a lot of friends in like the real world that's like, you know, doing what you're doing in terms of business, podcasting? Mm, no, it's outside, not, not like that. I have like my friends from way back, but not, not through... They don't do business. They're just regular nine to five people. Right, right. So if you use Twitter correctly, then you can really find people that are doing very similar things as you're doing right now as well. So I think it's definitely a, one of the better platforms for connections. Yeah, and it's also one of the, mo well, from my perspective, it's where the intelligent people gather. Because, yes. you know, you need to be, you, you need to read you need to scroll. Oh, great tweet, retweet or like. And, you know, reading makes you smarter. It does. I, I think that reading is a form of, you know, talking to your subconscious mind. So you get to choose how you want to really structure your subconscious mind. You can, you know, consume a lot of gossip, like all of that nonsense. Or you can read empowering tweets. You can read empowering blogs, consume the right content. And then afterwards, it's much easier to write. It's much easier to produce. Some of the best writers are people that read a lot as well. That's great. That's great. You know, I want to keep it in the social dynamics because here's something. Uh -huh. I've seen the trolls attack you. I've seen it. I've seen it. Uh -huh. they, they also have, a you know, attacked me. And the thing is, uh, at least in Twitter and make, you know, doing business in Twitter, uh -huh. you will get trolled. 
you know, right. and you need to, <laughs> you sometimes need to put your ego aside and just, okay, like and close it because <laughs> some, some people are, you know, relentless in, in, in their attack. So right. How, how do you actually deal with, with that kind of, of attacks and stress that it's not deserved, you know, you don't, you don't deserve the hate. And I think it's, it's something people fear of doing online business, receiving that amount of hate, you know, that you don't really deserve. How do you deal with that? Well, here's how I see it. I mean, if you are generating attention, what's always going to come is like the good and the bad as well. Mm -hmm. I would say like, you know, behind love, there is hate. So if you want to enter into the personal branding realm, you can't be that person that's like, oh, okay, like, you know, I'm never going to get a troll in my life. That's how it's supposed to work. So from the get go, I mean, I, I covered this in my consulting sessions as well. You have to have a game plan in mind. How are you going to approach it? And personally, the way that I do it is I just like straight up ignore. Okay. And I want to explain to you why I ignore. So Jose, say you're going to like the mall right now. Okay. And you go to the mall, you see two shirts, one shirt you like a lot and one shirt you don't really like that much. And you have money to buy both shirts. What are you going to do? You know, buy the, buy the shirt that I want or two shirts of the one that I like. But are you going to buy the shirt you don't like? No, I just ignore it. You just ignore it. So what's more important, money or your time and energy? Well, my time and energy, energy is way more important than money. It's way more important because it's never going to come back to you, right? That's true. So now I ask people the same thing with people. You have two people. One group is supporting you. One group is like really there for you, really trying to, you know, they're your fans. And then the other group are the trolls. They don't like you. Who do you give your time and energy to? <laughs> Well, you know, in my imagination, it's better to give the time to the, you know, the people who love me. Yeah, you give full time and energy to the people that love you and you completely ignore the trolls, just like you did with the shirt. And when people start thinking of it like this, they're like, oh, wow, like, why was I responding back before? I was wasting so much time, blah, 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 because it's not needed. What are you gaining from it? You're gaining nothing from it. So it's always about you always have the power to focus on what you want to focus on. It's all about mentality. So you get to choose. You know what I'm saying? You could be that person. You could be that person that buys both shirts or you can be that person that uses your money wisely and buys the right shirt. You could be that person that gives time to both groups mm -hmm. or you can be that person that gives time to that one person. You know, that, that's a great analogy. It's a great analogy because it makes so much so much sense. Right. Why why will I give my time and energy to something that first I cannot control? Right. And second, <laughs> it's just something that, that that if I pay attention to, it will make me feel bad. So brush it away. Brush it away. And you know, something about that, about people trolling you and you know, people criticizing you, really still make people a little bit sad you know and a little bit unmotivated and oh man this is too hard i don't want to be in the in the public stand i don't want people seeing me those are the, you know the mind barriers some people experience how, how does someone break away from that and stay motivated i think the way you stay motivated is if you're producing you see what i'm saying the only way that you like you know succumb to negativity is if you're one of those people that like, you know, lets it affect you. But if you're that person that is still creating at the end of the day, then it really it doesn't like it's something that you can just shoo away very quickly. And for people that are first entering the scene, what I recommend doing is like you really just focus on what brought you here in the first place. You didn't really come to, you know, entertain everyone. You came here to entertain your like tribe. You came here to entertain yourself. I mean, think about LeBron James, for example. That man has tons and tons of detractors. But do you think he's like, oh, no, like, they're being mean to me. I'm not going to play basketball. No. 
the only way that you keep on moving forward is by producing, is through action, is by consistency. The only time you move backwards is if your vision isn't strong enough and you start chirping back at the people that you know are throwing rocks. Wow. You know, that's great because if you have a, a north star, it makes it a little bit uh, way easier. For example, in my case, my vision, my north star is giving a better lifestyle, providing a better lifestyle for my family, you know? Nice. And great one. here's the thing. Here's the thing. When I wake up and I see my child, hey, papi, papi, yeah, this, you know, in Spanish is papi, but J-Lo turned papi into something else. In Spanish, <laughs> papi is, is daddy, you know? Okay. Uh, hey, daddy, daddy. Um, it, it, it fills me with joy. It gives me energy. And it makes me realize that no matter what, that's my North Star. My children, my wife. My wife is pregnant at the moment of this recording. Oh, congrats. And she's doing now in about a month. Oh, thank you. In about a month. So every time I see them, you know, my wife, now that I'm in, in the online business, telling me, are you sure this, this is working? Are you sure this is going to be fine? I'm telling her, of course, of course. You know, you, you both of you, the third one, when, when he's born, you are my inspiration, you know? So I have my, my goal set and my goal is to give a better lifestyle, you know, as a man, to them. So it makes it really easy, at least for me, to just say, damn this feeling of, of, you know, of procrastination away, shoo away. My family is more important. Absolutely. And the stronger your vision is, the less likely you're able to stray off of it. You're just that going to always, sense. you're only going to allocate your time and energy to do stuff that moves you forward in your vision. You see? You know? And, mm -hmm. and how does one, for example, someone that not, doesn't have a family because Let's be real. When you have a child, you need to provide. It's, it's something that, that, that most people, they have this craving to provide to the family. Right. Let's say you don't have a family. You are like, let's say, 20, between 20 and 25 years. You don't have, you don't, don't have a girlfriend or a boyfriend. You're still on college or you just graduated and your, your work, you know, sucks. How does one build a vision when, when you, you feel that life is not going the way you dreamed about? Well, it's through experimentation. I mean, the way that I was able to build it was through trying out a lot of different things. I mean, for a while, I was doing Amazon. I did a whole white label company. I was doing virtual real estate where I was buying and selling websites. I was doing affiliate marketing. And, you know, I was experimenting with a lot of different things. And, you know, I think a lot of people, especially my younger self, I thought like, you know, the vision was automatically going to be the first thing that comes to me. But that's not how it works. You have to fail like a lot before, gather some data, and then do process of elimination. And then you start seeing like what works for you and you can move forward from there. So someone that is not able to find a North Star yet, I just recommend you start following your curiosity, trying out more things, and see what interests you. Wow, that's really, really practical practical advice. Mm -hmm. And it, it really fits my my whole personality also, because way before being married, I was really struggling with, with, with the vision. But here's the thing. What you just said is more or less what I did. I just failed a lot in a lot of, you know, endeavors. And then I found what I really wanted to do service help people create their websites web design uh, graphic design and then on, on twitter after i, I came in to the to, to the arena teaching people with my ebooks with my uh -huh. with things i know how to do it opened up my online business opened up a way for me to express my desire to teach people and this is why for example i'm creating this whole Sovereign University, this is the name, uh, by the way, of, of, of what we're recording right now, Sovereign University, how to create your sovereign self, how to reach a level in which you can be free, mm -hmm. a level in which you can control your wealth 
and a level in which you can really manage your time on your own terms. Ergo, be a sovereign individual. Um, and you know, through storytelling, I really believe that you can really turn yourself into one because storytellers own the world. Storytellers are the one that people pay attention to. Storytellers are the people who, let's say, immortalize their, their brand, their persona. You know, when you think of a storyteller, who do you think of? You, you, don't, have to, you, you don't have to tell it, but it's right. always some dude or some chick that has really told an awesome story. Absolutely. And that's the thing. I mean, humans generally like stories because a part of me, I think it's a little primal too. I mean, if you think about it, our ancient ancestors, they had cave art. And I, I doubt they were making cave art just because they felt like Picasso. I think they were generally trying to tell stories. Awesome. And if you even think about it, a lot of the stories in today's world is older than we are. You see what I'm saying? Like, I think Moby Dick, when was it written? In the 1800s oh. or so? I mean, these stories can become immortal. So that's why everyone should try to become a storyteller because you just keep chugging these different stories out there and you never know. One can maybe outlive you. That is true. That mm. is true. You know, we've already reached the hour mark. And I really, really love ending these videos with the following. I've named them video platitudes. Why? Oh, okay. I just love platitudes. You know, they make me feel good. And I like, I like, I like to make people feel good because being in the service business, it's uh -huh. about making people feel good about themselves and through customer service and through delivering on time, you know, everything, everything about, about the service business. So let's, let's make some people feel good right now. Okay. Uh, let's end with a really uh, beautiful platitude by yourself, okay? Uh, to inspire people to take action. Like a quote that I really like or something that I would... It could be a quote. It could be a, just a really short, inspiring speech. Something that, uh, that you feel people should, you know, pay attention to. For sure, for sure. I think whoever it is that's listening to this, I think the number one thing that you should do especially in today's present day, is work on your future self. I remember when I was an undergrad, one of the quotes that really stuck out to me was, the harder the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. And the reason that's so big is because if you are like really hustling for something and you just get it immediately, like say you were trying to do like business and your first ever business was a multi-million dollar business, you didn't really invest a lot of emotions into it, right? It just came to you. Mm -hmm. Same with storytelling. If I, like my first ever story was easy, it wouldn't mean much. So I really recommend that people enjoy the process that they're doing. I mean, for me right now, I just take it on a day-by-day -day level because I'm doing it for my future self. I'm doing it for my future generations. I'm doing it for my family, something bigger than me. And that's what makes my North Star even more clear because once it's that powerful, you won't stray off. Like no matter who says what about you, stuff like that, you can just brush off easily because your vision for yourself is that much stronger. So for anyone that's listening, I recommend you adopt the level of mentality. Make today better than yesterday and tomorrow better than today. Beautiful, man. This is why I called you my my spirit animal. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. I like that. Armani, thank you so, so much for for saying yes. You know, I I see that you are very busy and taking some time to to talk with me, to to tell us your idea really, really makes this whole thing very special. Thank you so much, my friend. I appreciate you, Jose, and thank you for having me. This was very fun. I enjoyed it, and we'll be continuing this on my podcast as well. Of course. I'll send you my, my, my calendar for okay. you to, I like to choose that. The, 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 as I did with you. I sent you a, for, for this. I sent Absolutely. you a little calendar. Yep. You should get that for your podcast, by the way. 
I was just gonna say that I may, you know, it's free. Also, Calendly, it's it's free. Is it okay? Yeah, one hundred percent free. Definitely look to it. I love free stuff. I'm going to add free resources in 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 the sovereign library, uh, sovereign <laughs> university in the library. You'll see. It will be great. Perfect, man. That would be great. Thank you so much, Armani. Have a great night. Okay, you too. And until next time, my friend. Yep.